All right, our one new little piece today, which is not really new, is Newton's universal law of gravitation. We're not actually leaving circular motion, but we're going to begin now to look at the planets and the sun and as we and moon. So as we begin to do that, we need to go back and relook at our force of gravity. Okay, I talked to you about it in grade 11. I talked to you about it in grade 12. You've seen this equation already this semester. Fg is equal to g m1 m2 over r squared. Okay, if you remember, Newton said all objects that have mass, no matter um, how big that mass is, all objects exert a force of attraction on each other, and that force of attraction is called gravitation. Okay, so you and I exert a force of attraction on each other wherever we are at this moment, however far we are apart. So does the sun and the moon. Uh, so does the sun and the earth. So do I and someone in Australia. And so if we know the masses of the two objects and the distance that they are from each other, then we can find the gravitational force of attraction. Okay, so for real this time, when I did it with you before, I kept saying we don't need this until later. Well, later is now. So M1 and M2 are the masses of the two objects. And of course, that's measured in kilograms. R is the distance from the center of one object to the center of the other. So distance from center to center. of objects. And if you remember me talking about this before, it's like if I'm using two people, then whether I measure from their outside edge or to their center to center, it's not going to make a big difference. But if I'm using the Earth and the International Space Station, then it's going to make a big difference if I measure just to the outside edge of the Earth or all the way in. So we always say center to center. And it's a distance, but we call it an R because the force is going to have the same value everywhere on the circumference of radius r. Okay? And then capital G is known as a universal gravitational constant. Universal, which means it is the same gravitational, hard to talk and write at the same time when it's different words, gravitational constant. Universal means it is the same value no matter where you are in the universe on the surface of the Earth, uh, speeding towards the Sun, floating on the atmosphere in Jupiter, capital G is going to equal 6.673 times 10 to the negative 11 Newton meters squared per kilogram squared. This radius is measured in meters. If you look at the units, Newton meters squared per kilogram squared times a kilogram times a kilogram, so the kilograms will cancel. Divided by a meter squared, the meters will cancel. You'll be left with newtons, which is what Fg is measured in. So Fg is the gravitational force of attraction. Gravitational force of attraction between the two objects measured in newtons. It is always, always, always an attraction. It's not like when you have charges or magnets where they could be repelling. Gravi gravity always attracts. The Earth will always pull you down. Okay, so up until now, we've used a simplified version of this because if you're at or near the surface of the Earth, then one of these m's will be the mass of the Earth, and one of these, the, and the r will be the radius of the Earth. And so the gm over r squared we replace with little g. Okay, actually I can make it equal because I didn't put a value in there. At or near the surface of the earth, g is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared. And if you remember, we did this in class earlier in the semester. This g, we know it as the acceleration due to gravity. It is also something that's called the gravitational field strength. Gravitational field strength. 
just another name for the acceleration due to gravity. And if you think about it, like here's the Earth, and there is an area all around the Earth, and if you're anywhere in that area, you're going to experience a pull, a gravitational pull towards the Earth. So what this little g is telling us is how big the acceleration would be uh, at that spot towards the Earth. This area around the Earth is called a field, a gravitational field. And so little g is really telling us how strong is that field. Okay, so it's the gravitational field. In the next unit, we will get into electric fields around charges. Okay, so gravitational fields, little g. When, so we can't use our other equation very much anymore, our fg equals mg, which is the simplified version for when you're at or near the surface of the Earth. So if the object's at or near the surface of the Earth, or if we know our little g value somewhere else, then we can still use this. But most of the time, we'll have to use Newton's universal law of gravitation because if we're looking at the force between two planets, well, they're not at or near the surface of the Earth. So you, obviously you can't use 9.81 there. Okay? But if you were on the surface of Mercury, you might know the little g for Mercury, and then you could still find an object's weight uh, by doing that little g times m. Okay? So little g can have a value anywhere. It just won't be 9.81. All right? Um, this is called an inverse square law. So the further you get away from the object, if you double r, the f's going to get uh, doubled squared smaller. So it's going to get four times smaller. So if r gets bigger, fg is going to get smaller. That's the inverse. And it's going to get smaller by a square of the factor. If r gets smaller, fg is going to get bigger by a square of the factor. Okay, so they're inversely proportional, but it's the inverse square. All right, um, what else should I tell you? I don't Oh, there's a chart in the back of your book. It's on page 951, I think it is. I'm just checking. No, 955. And it has values for the mass of the Earth, the radius of the Earth, all that kind of stuff. Now, when you look at that chart, It'll t give you two radiuses. One is the radius of the Earth, and the other is the radius of the Earth's orbit. So if this is the Earth and this is the Sun, the radius of the Earth's orbit is from the center of the Sun to the center of the Earth. Okay, And we usually call the radius of orbit capital R. The radius of the Earth itself we would call small r, just to be able to tell them apart. And that would just be from the center of the Earth out. So if you imagine, sorry, destroying my textbook here, just have to move it. If you imagine an object revolving around the Earth, <laughs> that was my textbook just sliding after I tried to move it out of the way. We're having fun here. Uh, if you imagine er, an object revolving around the Earth, the radius of orbit would be this. It would be capital R. This little piece to the surface of the Earth would be little r. So this whole thing is capital R. This little piece is little r. And this is the height or the altitude above the Earth. It's going to be h. So the radius of orbit will be equal to the radius of the object, like the Earth or the Sun, plus the height the other object is above it. Um, one other thing that I should probably tell you is that when the difference between rotation and revolution. Rotation is spinning on your axis. Revolution is going around an object. Okay, so the Earth rotates on its axis, and that takes it 24 hours. It revolves around the Sun, and that takes it 365.25 days. Okay, so there are some constants that you're going to need in that chart on page 955. When you do your homework questions, I'll give you a bigger chart the next day we come back to this stuff, okay?